Hey, 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 what's going on, my ASVAB party people? Coach Anderson here. In this video, I'm actually gonna be showing you four different questions as an AFQT sampler. So this first one's gonna be arithmetic reasoning. The second question is gonna be paragraph comprehension. The third will be word knowledge. And the fourth one will be math knowledge. So if you like this type of video, here's what I need you to do before I begin solving these problems. I really just need you to like this video and comment on the video letting me know if this is a good idea to do more of these kind of sampler style videos for you, okay? So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with number one. Again, take a second, pause the video. I'll give you three seconds, two. All right, let's get it done. So here's what we're gonna do first, no matter what, this is an arithmetic reasoning. We want to read the question first. So when we read the question, it says, hey, if the total charge was this much money, well then, how many hours did the plumber work? Okay, cool. So what I'm looking for, again, always read the question first. We're looking for how many hours the plumber worked. So off of that first step, now we know that we're looking for a time period. And the answer choices, they tell us that too, right? So we have those answer choices. We have the question, blank hours of work. Right there, sounds good. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna understand how to set this up. Because in setting this up, we see that we have the total charge for the job being 170, we have a flat fee of $50, and we're adding on $30 per hour of labor. Okay, so how do we get this all making sense? Well, we can set up an equation. We can say, technically speaking, we can say that the flat fee plus the labor, so you know the amount of money that this plumber makes while he's actually working, that's gonna equal the total charge. So remember, when you're creating equations, what you're really doing is you're making sense of the context of the English, and that's what we've done here. So the flat fee, well, guess what? That's the $50 right here. Flat service fee of 50 bucks. So I'll write that in, 50 bucks plus how do we calculate the labor? Well, the labor is going to be however many hours this plumber worked multiplied by that hourly rate, which is $30 per hour. So for example, if the plumber works two hours, that's $30 times two, and then we add on that flat fee. But no matter what, you're gonna be multiplying the rate by the number of hours in this case. So there we are, we'll have 30 bucks per hour multiplied by H, which is going to be the number of hours that this plumber works, and the total charge, well, guess what? We're told right there that that is $170. So look at that. We have everything we need, and we're good to go. We can solve this. What this is gonna look like is 50 plus 30H equals 170, solving this beginning by subtracting 50 on both sides. And that's going to cancel out on the left, leaving us with 30H equals 120. Lastly, we just divide both sides by 30, and we are good. Because now we get H by itself, and so the number of hours that this plumber worked is 4 hours. So the answer to question number 1 is going to be B. So hopefully you got it right, and even if you didn't, remember the goal here is to learn from every mistake. That's really what we're trying to do every single time. Next up, let's take a look at question number two, the paragraph comprehension question. So in this problem, what we're trying to do, remember, even though this is not a word problem, I'm gonna let you in on a little trick, we still wanna read the question first. So remember, we don't wanna you know, confuse ourselves with all this information. Right here is where we start. What is one primary purpose of photosynthesis as described in the passage? So that's what I'm gonna really log in my head. What's the primary purpose or one primary purpose of photosynthesis? So when I read the passage, that's what my eyes are gonna be open to now, photosynthesis. So here we go, we'll read the passage and answer the question. The process of photosynthesis allows plants to convert sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. This process is essential not only for plant growth, but for also providing oxygen to the atmosphere, which is vital for life on Earth. So again, process of photosynthesis allows plants to convert sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide 
into glucose and oxygen. Which of these answer choices embody this, embodies this? A, to produce carbon dioxide for the atmosphere? Uh, no, it provides oxygen to the atmosphere, not carbon dioxide. So I'm gonna say A is incorrect. If I take a look at choice B, to provide energy for plant growth. Well, photosynthesis allows plants to convert sunlight, water, carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. And that's essential for plant growth. Provide energy for plant growth? Yeah, that seems pretty, uh, like a pretty good answer to me. I'll highlight it, but I won't say that that's the answer yet. Let's double check against C and D. So choice C, to absorb water from the soil. Uh, let's see, convert sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is that the primary purpose? Mm, I don't think so. It's possible, yeah, you know, you have the water in the soil and it takes it. But is that the purpose of it, to just take water? No, it's to provide energy. So I'm going to say that C is not an answer either. And then D, when I check this out, we have to convert oxygen into glucose. Well, let's see, to convert... Uh, nope, it's not oxygen that it's converting. It's what? Carbon dioxide. So tricky there, but I'm not going to get got. So the correct answer here, confirmed, is B. So again, hopefully you're getting this right so far. And just like I said earlier, if you like this type of style video where I go over different concepts in one video, go ahead. Let me know in the comment section because I really want to make sure that I do more like this for you. Next up, for word knowledge, we have what is the meaning of the word abundant in the sentence below? The farmer was grateful for the abundant rainfall this season, which helped his crops thrive. Hmm, what do crops really need? Well, food, water, right? Time to grow. So an abundant rainfall, well, you need water, so it looks like we had a lot of water. Would it make sense if it said not a lot of water? So scarcity in water? Well, no, I don't think that, you know, crops and plants would thrive unless we're talking about desert conditions. So we're talking about a farmer here. Farmers don't farm in the desert. He's grateful for the abundance, so the tons and tons of rainfall this season, which helped those crops thrive. Not scarce, because we're not talking about, again, not having water. So nope. Plentiful. I like that answer a lot unpredictable let's go ahead and <laughs> i zoomed in too far c unpredictable uh not quite fitting here insufficient no abundant we said means plentiful you know a lot of it and so that's why b is the correct answer for number three here for word knowledge moving over to math knowledge this is our last one my part of people let's get this one right here we go what is the value of x if 5x plus 3 equals 18 so zooming on in let's figure it out Let's go ahead and solve this equation straight up. So first, I'll subtract 3 from both sides, because remember, we're trying to work backwards from the order of operations. I knew, if I knew what x was, I'd multiply by 5, then add the 3. So working backwards, the first step I'll take is subtracting 3 to cancel that out. Because now I just have 5x left over, and that's going to equal 15. The last step that I'll take is divide both sides by 5, because we're trying to get that x right here by itself. So, boom, cancels out, and we are going to have over here x equals 3. That is 15 divided by 3. And there we are, my math party people. All set. The correct answer for the last question is C. So the correct answers for this practice session were B, 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 and then C. So again, my party people, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Coach Anderson. If you like what we do, as always, comment on this video, please, please, please. That way I know that this style of video works for you. I got your back, my math party people, my English party people, and my ASVAB party people. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. As always, let's ace the ASVAB, and I'll see you in the next video.